celebrate Jesus and to declare in public that he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. With 14 people that confessed him in the waters of baptism and we're proud of them. I think that uh, except for one person that has blessed us by moving from somewhere else into the family, all of these people have come to Christ uh, at our church or through the ministry of our church. So we're, we're blessed by the fruit. Uh, three of those were also students that were internationals from the Czech Republic and they all came to Christ. Uh, when they visited uh, here in the United States and in Canada and spent some time with Christian families during their choir tour and during their orchestra tour. So we have opened up the doors to them to invite them back to come for a student internship. And lo and behold, three got baptized last year and three got baptized this year. We believe there is more to come. And so we are excited. But uh, uh, one of them, affectionately, uh, when they asked him, where are you getting baptized? I mean, this is the Castlewood Park, but he said, I'm getting baptized at the Baptism Park. So it's been uh, spoken for. This is going to be the Baptism Park from now on. And uh, God likes it that way. Amen. All right. Well, you may know that uh, last summer we started summer internships for students from the Czech Republic. We hope to expand it to other countries as well. We have uh, three of the Czech students here. They came here, except for one of them, at various times with a music group that was touring around the United States and Canada. And so we have uh, Stepan and Barcha and Mila with us. And the reason why they are here is that during their tour and during the time that they were staying in Christian families, they saw the love of Jesus and they came to believe in Jesus Christ. So they're going to share their testimonies with you. They wrote that down in English. And we're really excited uh, how it all happened. So come on forward and share your testimonies with us. When I was little, my family and I were in a car accident and the seat where I normally sit would, uh, would be completely smashed. But something that morning told me to sit on the other side, so I got out of the car almost without a scratch. I knew that, did, that this dis, didn't happen by a coincidence, by a coincidence that some, somebody above us must have been protecting me. This was the first day when I felt the presence of God. However, I didn't know what to do and I had never spoken about faith with anybody. So time passed and instead of walking with God, I chose to be with a group of cool kids because, and because I wanted to, them to like me, I started behaving like them. Uh, we would always be gossiping, lying and making fun of everything and everybody. I knew that this wasn't good and I was angry in myself, but instead of changing, I used, uh, uh, instead of changing, I used it uh, against and I was angry in myself, but instead of changing it, I uh, use it against others. And uh, for every mistake I made, I would blame someone else. God ended up using my relationship in my life uh, to show me how bad my behavior was. And I decided I wanted to change it. I believe God used this to show me his incredible mercy even before I knew him. Everything changed after my visit, my first visit to the U.S. I watched people who glorify God, are happy, and treat each other as a family. After such a long time, I felt the same desire in my heart as I did when I was a child. I sat down, cried, and asked Jesus to save me. When my friends asked me what is going on, I told them that I feel loved. But there are some friends from the choir that impacted you, and so tell us your story. So, in last November, when the team from Harvest St. Louis came to Little Michelin, our choir met with the Americans at the local church. I saw videos from their trip to the USA, United States, and three girls gave their testimonies. I really like it, and then Michael got up and started speaking about God. At that moment, I felt that my heart was gripped somehow, and I began to cry and shake. My friends were looking at me and didn't know what was happening to me. It was a very strange feeling, but in the middle of it, I felt love. I wanted to keep 
talking to myself, but my friend su suggested me that I go to speak to Michael about it. He told me that God touched me and he wants to change my heart. After lunch, we sat down together and he explained it, it to me from the Bible. After that, I prayed to God to save me. It was the first time I ever prayed. I also received my first Bible. It was a very powerful experience. Since that time, I have believed in God. I want to follow the Lord and His perfection. My life began to change for the better and I want to God to lead me. Wow, it's awesome. All right, there are some people here today that were they, they were there on that day when Stepan came to Christ. Carla, where are you? Carla was there, Robert was there. Uh, who else was there? Anyway, we had a team of people. Christy was there, Colleen was there. And we all witnessed that and Stepan came to Christ. It was just awesome. Praise God for you, brother. Barcha. When I was a child, I went to church with my grandmother every Sunday. I remember it was just out of bored because I didn't understand it what they were saying. Nobody told me nothing and anything about God or Jesus. I was confused. A few uh, years ago, I came to the United States with my school choir, and the first time we sang uh, worship was in Chicago. I was shocked of reaction of all people when our choir started singing the song Clap of God. I heard never seen anything like this before. I felt amazing and great. There was a strange grip of my heart and suddenly I started to crying and couldn't stop it. Today I know it was a sing, some sign <laughs> from God. Many people in the church told me when you choir was singing, I experienced God's presence. And at the time, it seemed incredible to me. Last summer, on July 6, I was driving home and my aunt called me. She told me, come home fast because your house is burning. You guys understand? Their, their house caught on fire. Their house was burning down. I was shocked and drove home so fast. The fire was only in the kitchen or our house, but I had filled the whole house, whole house uh, with smoke and the whole kitchen was very damaged. Uh, the experience was very scary and my family and I feel like we didn't know what to do. The next day we started to cleaning the house and to through uh, what, uh, what was damaged and what survived. Among all the things, we found a ceramic statue of Angel. Uh, there was a gift from our friends and the angel fell to the ground, but it didn't break somehow. I look at completely untouched it, but the fire even through. Uh, it was just a few uh, feet from the outbreak of the fire. In this moment, I know everything will be okay. I was a thing from God. In this moment, I believe that God loves me and saved me. Thank you so much for your testimonies. What a great work. Um, most of you know that uh, Christy will be moving to the Czech Republic in September permanently to be a missionary in that country and, and to actually reside in the town of Little Michel where that school for teachers is, where some of these uh, students are attending. So can we have a couple more testimonies? How about if we have the young ones, the little ones now? Evangeline and uh, her little sister. Girls, come here. We'll do it by way of question and answer. All right, so. So we had a little conversation earlier on, and that was great because I heard you uh, talk about Jesus and confess Jesus, and uh, you can sit down, that's great. And, uh, and so I, you know, I wanted to see whether you would uh, also tell the people. So let me just ask you straight out. So you girls have believed in Jesus? Yes. Yes. Okay, you believe in Jesus. And, uh, and so... 
What did Jesus do for you? Um, well, he saved my sins and um, he died on the cross and uh, he paid and three days and he, he got rolled into, uh, into um, like a big cave and then three days later he rose again. He sure did. He sure did, yeah. So what did Jesus do for you? Uh, he died on the cross for us and he went in a, in a big, uh, he went in a cave and then three days later he came back alive. All right, so, so what about the baptism? So, would you be able to just say to your family here, church family, about the baptism today? A little bit? Like, what do you mean? Yeah, like, like so, why do you want to be baptized? What do you want to, what do you want to show? Well, um... Well, um... My friends and me... Well, I started, um... I started to teach them about God, and um, and they believed in it. And I realized that I wanted to get baptized, and so I thought that I wanted to. And then I saw my sister um get baptized, and um, I I saw her, and I knew she knew about Jesus, and so um. I wanted to get baptized with her to be, um... That's good. Yeah. That's great. That's awesome, yeah. So you get baptized together today, right? And uh, so we have heard your confession. And I can tell you that, you know, there's some people that are old and they confess Christ and some people that are very young they confess Christ but we, also, we always say that when there is a testimony of people that believe in Jesus like the two of you who am I to say you know that, that it's not so or that people are too young so you both believers alright and we're going to baptize you today amen thank you thank you we love you alright who's next My name is Abby O'Key, and I was saved in 2011 when my mom had cancer while she was pregnant. But both the mom and the baby survived by the grace of God. That night, I heard my dad talking to my sister about salvation. I wanted to hear more. So I asked how I could be saved. He told me about death, hell, heaven, and hell, and salvation. He, he asked if I wanted to be saved. So that night, I accepted Jesus into my life the same night my sister did. Now I want to tell others about what Jesus did for me. In Psalms 121, verse 1 through 2 encourages me. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who made the heavens and the earth. So, so before Hannah speaks, so, so you're one of the sisters that came to Jesus when your mom was healed of cancer. And the doctors told her that she should not have the baby. They wanted to take the baby, but your mom refused. And your dad said, no, we're going to... So your mom wanted to give her life for the baby, right? And it impacted you and your sister. You came to Christ, but later on, you shared the gospel with your brother Samuel, right? Was it you? It was you and who else? And Sarah, right? And so the brother who was the miracle baby... You know, through which you came to Christ, and you share the Christ with you share Christ with Him, and now He, we heard His testimony. He's going to be baptized today as well. I think it's awesome. It's great. Okay, so tell you what, can we sing one more song, and then you girls come up, and then Katie will come up, and we'll wrap it up. Anybody else here? Is there anybody here that feels like God has touched them, and would like to get baptized today to make a confession and come to Jesus today? We have had that happen two years ago. It's okay. The Holy Spirit may convict you during the next song. So we'll see what happens. If not, we've got a few more people to share, okay? So let's sing to God again and be grateful. Let's thank Him. Let's set our hearts on Him in tune with His plan. the 
voice of doubt again Echo within me every promise That you would be louder than my fears Speak to the void when I can't see And lift up my hand in every vow Let your joy be greater than my grief testimonies and then we'll be on our way to the river. Hi, my name is Hannah Key and I grew up in a Christian home and knew all the Sunday school answers. I knew that Jesus came and was God and whatever, but I didn't really think about it or really just kind of pay too much close attention to it. I just kind of did it for the prizes at the end of Sunday school. Um, but whenever I was um, whenever I was about six years old, my dad was talking to me about Romans 3.23 that is for all had sin. You see, I thought because I knew all the Christian answers and I thought because I grew up in a Christian home, I get to go to heaven. But you see, that verse really showed me that I had sinned and I had disobeyed God. And because of that, I don't deserve to go to heaven. And he showed me then and there that I need to put my faith in him. But even though I knew it then, I didn't really do it until later when I was watching a gospel presentation and I saw uh, just someone pretending to be Jesus, like, and he died on the cross. And I really just thought then and there, I was like, wow, Jesus loves me. He loves me not because, not because I grew up in a Christian home, not because I am pretty, not because of anything else. He loves me for who I am. It doesn't matter how many times I disobey him, he will still love me. And I remember I went to the bathroom and I just weeped. I weeped because I knew that I was loved and that that love was so powerful and it never ever ended. And I choose then and there to put my faith and live my life for Christ. For someone who loves me so much, I wanted to pour my life out for Christ. So I want to be baptized to show all of you that I want to live for God and only for Him and not for myself. And I have a verse that I always 
always think about whenever I'm thinking about work or whenever I'm thinking about whenever I'm being stressed. It's um, Colossians 3.23. It says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for man. You see, this reminds me that I need to work for God only, not for myself or not for anyone else in anything and everything I do. Wow. My name is Raina Key. Um, um, I was born and raised in a Christian home. My father and mother always told me about God's love and grace. When I was five, my sister, Hannah, and I were pretending to baptize each other. Uh, my, mom, my mom asked if I knew what, I, what being baptized meant. Uh, my mom then explained that baptism is an outward expression of an inward decision and explained that this inward decision is admitting that I have sinned and knowing that I need a Savior and that believing in by Jesus' death, burial, burial, and resurrection, I can be saved from the punishment of my sins. That day, I believed in Jesus as my Savior. Many years later, when my family found out my mom had cancer, it opened my eyes to death, that because of my Savior, I can look forward to life after death. But many people who have not heard about Jesus don't have this hope to look, after, uh, look forward to after death. I knew that I needed to share the gospel. Since then, the Lord has used me as his vessel through teaching Sunday school, helping in Awana, a children's Bible program, and serving five years as a summer missionary. I am continually blessed by the word God has given me and give all the glory to him. Today, I want to take a, forward, uh, take a step forward in my faith. As I teach boys and girls the gospel, I realize that being bold about your faith means stepping out of your comfort zone. I want to be bold about my faith. This church has been my, fam my church family for over 10 years, and the fact that I get to share this new chapter of my life with them fills my heart. Thank you so much for this church, and I'm so thankful because every week I'm reminded that I am loved. Acts 20:24 20, says, But I do not account my life of value or as precious to myself, if only I may finish the course in the ministry that I have received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. That's great. Thank you so much, Reina. Katie, you're the last one. And uh, I'm so happy that you are the last one to wrap this up because you've been searching for so long. I just love your testimony. Would you share it with the church? Hi, my name is Katie Gavali. I have had a very privileged, hard life. My parents were struggling and were working very hard to give their children anything that they wanted. Actually, most of the people in the neighborhood had no idea that we were living paycheck to paycheck. They even worked several jobs to put me in a private Catholic school. I flourished there. Even I could feel it. I still remember the day the teacher gave me my children's Bible. I brought it home. My oldest brother was 18 years older than me. He had seen my Bible on the table. And he looked at my dad and he said, How could you let her have that in our house? Before I knew it, they were pushing each other, even punching each other in the face. I couldn't understand that how a book of God's love could create so much hate, even in a father or a son. A few years later, my parents separated. But before that, I had never brought my Bible home. I kept it at school, afraid of what it might bring later on. I was very terrified and confused. After being in the public schools, I heard a lot of, oh, you know, in the end, religion, all religions end to the same thing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> taking a world religions class and remember thinking maybe they're right maybe all religions end up to be the same thing so I wanted to experience it all so I did first I began with Buddhism um, Buddhism was a little discomforting for me because it believed in praying basically to yourself uh, it felt a little awkward not praying to God but praying to your inner light so I gave that up. And then I was introduced to Hinduism. And I knew that there was only one God. So I didn't bother with that one. Then there was, aha, Sikhism. C 
Sikhs, they believe in one God. So maybe this is the one. But then they have gurus that tell you what you can and can't do based off of seasons, feelings, the rain. That didn't feel right either. One of my last religions that I found before Christianity was Islam. It was obedient. It was strict. It described me as a person. So I thought maybe that was it. But then as I started practicing, a lot of the rules didn't make sense to me. One of the laws is you can't adopt a child. One of the laws is that you aren't allowed to go to the mosque and pray side by side with your husbands or your sons. And that didn't really sit well with me either. As I grew with these families, I didn't really feel like they were united. So after leaving London, I came back to St. Louis and I decided that I wanted a Christian husband and a Christian family. So we got married and I wanted to have a baby, but I had had two abortions before then during my journey and it wasn't happening. And I was convinced that God hated me and he was disgusted with me. <laughs> Clearly he wasn't, right? <laughs> One day in the shower, crying and sobbing, I hit the floor. I hit the floor hard and I was convinced that I would never have a baby. Then I heard a voice. It said, I forgave you a long time ago. It's time for you to forgive yourself. Then I heard, <laughs> then I heard open the Bible. I didn't know where to turn to. I had just opened it. And a few years before trying for a baby, I found out I was going blind. So I had a lot of things going on with me. Samuel 126 pardon me my Lord as surely as you live I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord I prayed for this child and the Lord has granted me what I asked for sorry I have a little book here because my font is so big <laughs> and to him to the Lord for his whole life I will give him to the Lord and he worshiped the Lord there my heart, mind, and soul changed in this instant. I knew the Lord was with me, and I was with him, and I was baptized by the Holy Spirit. Now I rejoice with all of you with this water baptism to tell the world my journey to Christ and to give faith to all of you that your life can change with the power of God when you give your heart and soul. God gave his one and only beloved son and he gave him to us to cleanse our sins and to change the world. Amen. Awesome. Thank you so much. Perhaps sit up, sing that together to glorify the Lord Jesus. How great a chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name. Christ. 
Let's seal the promise Your buried body Began to breathe Out of the silence The roaring lion Declared the grave Has no claim on me Then came the morning That sealed the promise Presence here, we thank you that you enthrone yourself in the praise of your people. Thank you for these testimonies, Father, each so unique and different of uh, some very young people and some more experienced people. And we thank you, Lord, that through all these things you have delivered them all. And we pray, Father, that uh, as these brothers and sisters enter into the waters of baptism, that we would see the picture of the burial in Christ, their sin being paid for and remaining forgiven in the grave that Jesus Christ was laid in. And out from the grave, Jesus rose on the third day and together with Him, in Him, by grace, through faith, all of those that believe. And we thank You for that. We thank You for the promise and thank You that You are coming back to claim us as Your own one day. Even so, the bride say, come, come quickly, Lord Jesus, we pray in your name, amen. amen. So let's walk over to the water.